Okay, hello everybody. Saturday, happy Saturday to you. Uh, this is hopefully week one has been okay for you guys. I hope uh, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, if you guys are in this uh, semi quarantine, I'm gonna say semi quarantine because you can still kind of go out for essential stuff right now. Um, and, uh, you know, be, be good to each other out there when, when you're, when you're doing the shoppings and you're, and you're, uh, you know, getting, getting your essentials, um, you know, be good. Don't, don't overstock the, the fucking cart. We're going to get through it together. If we're, if we're all kind of working together, we can, uh, you know, kind of make it through, make it through all this shit without, um, without, <clears throat> you know, everybody kind of struggling. Uh, if you see me reaching, that's, I, I got, I got some tea, uh, kind of, I woke up with a bit of a, a bit of a headache this morning, um, and, a more congestion, uh, than, than I would, uh, particularly care to have, uh, so I'm gonna be doing, and drinking this, and it, and it helps, it helps the throat, so, a little, little turmeric ginger tea, uh, herbal, uh, not caffeinated. I'm trying to like not over caffeinate myself uh, in the in in these coming weeks, but uh, <laughs> so um, it's Saturday, so I wanted to kind of get get into the practice of of what what my Saturday videos are going to be. Um, I mentioned this yesterday in the videos. Uh, I apologize if you guys have already heard me talk about this. Like if. If we have like regular viewers of the video, I apologize if we're gonna do a little bit of recap for the for the next couple of days, just so just so whoever's watching and and kind of gets on board with the daily videos, um, the daily road reflections, uh, y you know, is is up to speed on on what the hell is going on. Um, I'm I'm gonna kind of have uh, Monday through Thursday on these daily videos be sort of what these road reflections have always been <clears throat> more of, um, some stories, uh, new stories, interesting ideas, stuff like that, that I, uh, that I want to cover, uh, that I want to talk about. And if you know, these road reflections are a little bit looser and kind of, uh, you know, rantier in, in that, in that sense. Um, so usually I have some notes, and stuff. Uh, so Monday through Thursday, it's going to be the regular ones. Friday, I'm going to I'm going to call Philosophy Fridays uh, <laughs> because everybody loves some form of alliteration, right? Where I'm going to talk about um, <clears throat> some kind of an idea that I think is interesting. Um, uh, a little while back, we we talked about the benefits of Stoicism. That was something that we that we discussed, and people seemed to really enjoy it. I really enjoyed doing a video about that. Uh, we talked about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I really enjoyed talking about that as well. Um, so uh, it'll be stuff like that, and I, and I have um, one or two topics so far. But if you guys have ideas, if you guys have topics that uh, that you're like, hey, you haven't talked about this in six months, or you haven't talked about this at all, uh, be something cool to hear your take on, or or what what have you. Um, go ahead and, and, and leave a comment and, uh, I will, um, I will, yeah, I will add that to the list of, of things to talk about because that's, that's what we have right now <laughs> is, is talking about that. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's sort of what I'm going to do for Fridays is, is kind of talking in terms of philosophy and ideas and stuff like that. So, um, and Saturdays, what I want to do is kind of tell, do, do a little storytelling type stuff, right? So this will kind of be like fireside chat kind of thing uh, without it being an actual fireside. By, by a plant and, and Spider-Man. That, that's, that's what it'll be. <laughs> Spidey chats. Spidey chats is... Seems to be a nice name for it. Um, so that's, that's sort of the plan for what Saturdays are going to be. And then Sundays I'm going to do a live stream, uh, for however long this thing lasts and however, how, however often I can do a live stream, I will do one. 
um, hopefully we'll be back in touring session. And if we are in touring session, I will figure out how to integrate live streams into, uh, into touring. That will be something that I'll do. Uh, so, so that's sort of the schedule that I'm going to try to adhere to. It's taken me a little bit longer than, uh, than I would have liked to, to come up with a schedule like this. Um, just, yeah, I, I always have a hard time. Well, first of all, I, I mean, I was out on the road for a month straight and I usually like when I come home have to take two or three days just to kind of recalibrate myself. And I, and I had a schedule that I was working with, uh, that was like pretty good that I really liked. Uh, where the mornings were more administrative stuff and then I would have some lunch and then I would, you know, make a little coffee and go into like research and writing um, and doing that sort of stuff till the end of the day. And then the, the evening is sort of, you know, past seven o'clock is whatever I want to make the, the rest of my evening to be. You know, if I have a show, I'm going to that. If I want to just chill out at home and, and catch up on some Star Trek or whatever, it's that's that's what I'm doing. Um so yeah, so I kind of had that schedule and now, um, you know, I have to change everything because I've gotten a bunch of emails already. Uh, as, as you know, uh, so far I'm at six weeks of, of gigs lost. That is probably going to go up to about eight or nine weeks. Um, I'm hoping no more than that because I will, I might lose my mind. <laughs> this, this could be a video series where you slowly see me uh, descent into madness. That'll be exciting for people that, that should, is, is that, is that kosher with the, with, with the algorithms on Facebook and YouTube? <laughs> I mean, it has to be right. Like the DNC has been descending into madness and they, they seem to prop up all of their fucking narratives. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so today I wanted to, you know, do, do a little storytelling um, to, to, cause I have a bunch of these stories from the road. If you are subscribed to my email list, to the monthly email list, you know, that I send out, uh, something called stories from the road every single month. That's the main portion of it. And then, uh, my tour dates and then a couple of videos that you can catch up on, um, that, that goes out every month at the first Monday of every month is what I try to send those out for. Um, so if you are uh, subscribed to it, awesome. This is kind of this is going to be kind of similar. You might hear some similar stories, um, you know, kind of formatted a little bit differently in these in these sessions. But if you are not and you would like to to check those out, uh, you can join my email list. Uh, the link is in that description below. So make sure you uh, check it out. Make sure you are um, you're getting into it. So. And, and make sure that you're subscribed, uh, you know, con I, I don't have like a giant subscriber base. Um, you know, sometimes I get like 20 subscribers in one day and that's super awesome, but I never know if those 20 subscribers are ever getting notified that I'm putting stuff out there. Um, so if you are confused about that, if you don't know whether you are subscribed to my stuff or not, just, uh, just double check, hit the bell. Uh, make sure that you're getting alerts uh, on on both Facebook and um, and the YouTubes and the iTunes and whatever whatever else that you're subscribed to. Um, uh, I, I went through some censorship uh, about two weeks ago, and and I'm still kind of recovering from that on the audio podcast end of things. Um, and uh, I, I actually so I've got to talk about it on two different platforms. Uh, Hardlands Media and I, the the folks there talked about it, um, and uh, I just talked about it with Ron Placone. Um, I might contact a few other folks to see if they're interested in that story. Uh, but there's so much shit going on that uh, little old me getting censored uh, via Spotify and shit might not be particularly the most interesting thing. Um, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, so make sure that you're, you're subscribed and, and you're getting all of the updates that I, uh, am putting out there for, for you guys. So, um, yeah, let's get into the, the, the story I want to, uh, I want to dive into. And, uh, I know, so, Here's the thing. This story is about me meeting Tulsi Gabbard um, about a month ago at one of her town halls, right? And um, I kind of just want to talk about uh, what I saw there and, and kind of what 
what I got out of it. Um, and uh, I know I've been talking about Tulsi Gabbard a bunch in, in, in a very short, concentrated amount of times, but time, but I think over the last 72 hours, it's been a little bit of a hot button news uh, for her supporters, which I am one of her supporters. I'm also a big Bernie Sanders supporter. Uh, none of those things, if you guys, if you guys follow this, my, my channel and my stuff, you guys should know that I've, I've made a bunch of videos about Tulsi, um, talked about her a bunch. So you guys can go and check those out to see where my opinions on her, on her lie, where, where things are. Um, the disappointing, uh, Joe Biden endorsement, uh, has had me reflecting on, um, that town hall specifically because, I was there. I attended it. I got to I got to meet the lady and uh, and and see you know her supporters firsthand. Um, so I hope this is sort of an entertaining story for you guys. At, at the least, an entertaining story. So um, I was on tour in the New England area, January, February, uh, end of January, early February. Uh, really fun shows, really great, got to, you know, meet some really great people and, um, got to really work out the show, uh, that, uh, I will be, I will be working on to, to release soon. And, uh, and I was like, you know, I have a couple days off. I had, uh, I was in Boston and Portland and then I had a few days off before I was going into Vermont. Um, you know, so, so the whole state of New Hampshire is right between Massachusetts and Maine and Vermont. So it's like, all right, I'm going to go through that state anyway. And I was couch surfing uh, with, uh, with a great guy, super, super nice dude. And, you know, we, we got chatting and, um, you know, we, we, you know, I had uh, probably like three or four days off. Um, and uh, it was in the midst of a pretty big storm that was coming through as well. And so I, I kind of like just skirted around most of that stuff. But, uh, so I went on Tulsi's website and I was like, well, she's in New Hampshire. Um, she's doing a bunch of, a bunch of town halls and stuff like that. I wonder if there's any town halls that are relatively within driving distance. That's not too far away. Uh, you know, something an hour or less would be ideal. Let's see if we can make that work. If not, I what I can do is just go to the town that she's in and see if I can find a space to stay, uh, for a day or two and, you know, attend the town hall or, or what have you. And, uh, just to see, I, I didn't really expect a whole lot from it. I kind of just wanted to go and, um, and, and, and check it out basically. So, um, I found one in, uh, oh man, what was the, what was the town that she was in? Let me look that up on my, on my calendar. Um, exactly what town she was in. Uh, she was in Litchfield, Litchfield, New Hampshire is where she was. And she was doing a, a town hall at Campbell High School. Um, it's a Tuesday night, you know, so I drove up there and I didn't, you know, I was like, there's, there's, it's a small little town. And it, it was very interesting because there were like no lights around and, you know, and then it's just like the high school just popped up and I was like, oh shit, there it is, you know, and I pulled into the parking lot. Is, and I'm and I'm I'm sort of the outsider in this whole situation because I'm I'm not from New Hampshire I'm not from Litchfield I'm 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 not going to be voting until you know two months after this town hall anyway um, so I just kind of wanted to see what was up uh, so I sat down so I signed in um, I sat I, you know I looked at the merch stuff and they're they're all donation based which I'm assuming is how all the all the campaigns run their uh, run their merch is that it's it's sort of a donation uh whatever you can send give to give to them that and so um i you know i sat down uh an arp lady kind of gave some hand sanitizer to and which you know hey i i like a month ago i don't know if she would have known that that's a hot commodity so it's like cool i have that uh you know that i can utilize <laughs> now um so uh i had that i sat down um and we all just kind of waited and people were kind of filing in and I don't, I mean, it wasn't super huge, but I wasn't expecting it to be super huge. I mean, she's, she's doing like house parties and this super grassroots effort to, to talk and meet people. Um, you know, so I wasn't expecting it to be 
like a Bernie, a Bernie rally is like a couple thousand people, like tens of thousands of people coming in uh, to do it. So I wasn't really expecting it to be something along those lines. So, um, you know, this old, old man walked up and he was very kind of confused and didn't know where to go. And I was just like, hey, are you looking for a place to sit? Why don't you come sit next to me? And so, you know, he kind of came and shuffled in, sat down because we were in a high school auditorium. Right. It, it just was like one of those seats where it's all tight and like you just sit down. It's like these tight little seats. Um, it was kind of cool. Like we were, we were all kind of packed in together. And so then it started up. Uh, you know, and there, there was a guy uh, that uh, was a volunteer for the Tulsi campaign in New Hampshire, and he came out and started speaking. It was super cool because uh, what we found out later was like that was his first time speaking in public was to introduce Tulsi Gabbard. And I was like, wow, that's fucking that's really cool. Good for you. Right. Like, that's that's awesome. You got over like that's the de like that takes a lot because public speaking is something that people are so scared of. Um and to kind of see somebody to be like, I believe in this candidate so much that I'm going to uh, overcome my fear uh, and, you know, speak to my community and my friends um, about this person. So that was really cool. I, I thought that was really neat to see. So he introduced Tulsi and she came out and she she talked about her, her life, you know, did a little intro speech. Uh, she came up and, and she said a few words. Um you know, she, uh, you know, the big, um, the, that's sort of the, uh, these are all my images, by the way. These are the photos that I was able to take. Uh, so she's, she was, uh, you know, talking in front of a, a big American flag kind of thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, just did, did it, uh, maybe that was like 10, 15 minutes at most. Uh, and she immediately flipped it to let me talk to you guys. What questions do you guys have? What comments, concerns do you guys have? Um, so... You know, within 20 minutes of the of the whole town hall starting, we were into questions. Uh, there was, and and again, I've never been to any other town hall, so I don't know if that's kind of normal. Um, uh, I, I, that's just this is just my experience on what town halls are. If you guys have been to a Bernie rally or, or any other town halls or anything like that, uh, let me know if that's sort of a normal thing. Leave leave a comment about that. Um, so uh, yeah, so I I. Uh, you know, um, went to stand up to ask a question, right? Like, cause she was asking questions to everybody, so everybody's raising their hand. And I was like, eh, so I'll I'll ask a question too. I have I have questions. I'll 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 throw one out there. I don't want to um, monopolize time too much. And so a lot of people, you know, like the ARP lady, she stood up and uh, and she like asked about health care and and her plan for Medicare for all, which. If you saw her interview on Jimmy Dore a few months back, she kind of explained what it what exactly it was, and it's the Australian model. And um, I was like, yeah, I like that model. I'm I'm that's a model that I'm, I, I I definitely could support. It's it's everybody opts into uh, the Medicare system, and then if you want additional extra extra shit, uh, you can. And and I know there's there's probably issues issues with that 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 people don't particularly like. Uh, you know, the, the, the people that really like Ber Bernie's policy and Jai Paul's policy, um, they um, they don't particularly care for a deviation of anything. And that's also I mean, I, I guess it's fine uh, to, to each his own. I, I just don't w want people to shit on each other for having different ideas of, you know, to, and, and the reason why I like this is because I, I forgot to mention one thing when she started her 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 speech. Right. When she started going up and talking on stage, um, she asked a question about who in the room is considers themselves a Democrat. Uh, and about a third of the people raised their hand who in the room considers themselves to be a Republican. About a third of the people raised their hands and who considers themselves an independent, no party affiliation, that sort of thing. And a third of the people raised their hands. That's when I raised my hand is is for you know no party affiliation because I because I don't feel like I, like I'm registered to be a Democrat in the state of Pennsylvania but that's literally so I can at this point vote for Bernie Sanders right it was to either vote for Tulsi or Bernie that's that's um, really where I felt um, like you know um, that's those are the two candidates that I felt were worth voting for uh, so. 
that's kind of why I got my citizenship. That's why I registered to vote. And I had to vote in, as a Democrat in Pennsylvania because of his closed primaries. Um, so uh, it was interesting to see the room split up in thirds. And they all kind of came in to rally around uh, this one candidate. Thought that was pretty interesting. And, and, you know, the thing that I noticed was before everything started, people were being really cool to each other. Everybody was being very nice and chatting with each other and listening. There was a lot of listening to each other going on as well. Um, you know, e people with different backgrounds um, coming together to, to just hear each other out, I thought was very cool. Um, you know, the, the old man that sat next to me was, was pretty conservative. Um, and, uh, you know, we chatted for about a minute or two and, uh, you know, he, he was, he asked me where I was from and he, I asked him where he was from and, you know, I was like, was, were you local? So it was just really nice just to kind of see these people cordially get along. Um, even if it seemed like it was surface level, it was still very cool to be like, I don't think a lot of people here have the exact same political philosophical or sociological backgrounds and values and here we are just kind of sitting talking and exchanging ideas and thoughts that's it's fucking awesome to me so you know the AARP woman asked a question and she gave you she talked about her her Medicare for all plan and um and so then we got to another question and it was uh from a Trump supporter uh, for like wearing a Trump 2020 shirt, which I thought was just like, what a bold move. Like you came to a Tulsi town hall wearing her opponents, like pretty much every Democrat is running against Trump and you wore that. <laughs> and here's the thing, everybody, like nobody was like, boo, go fuck yourself, you piece of shit. Like no one did any of that stuff. They were all very cool and cordial and listened to the listened to the, the, the gentleman's question. And, you know, he basically asked about, like, what she's going to do to help the common man, uh, like rural areas and things of that sort. And she ba like Tulsi's answer was basically quelling this guy's fear of like, look, there's a lot that needs to be done kind of a thing like. We have to we have to make dynamic economic reforms that specifically help average working class people rather than bailing out corporations and Wall Street and banks and things of that sort. That was you know, I was like, OK, good response. So we kind of moved around. I don't remember every single question. Um, there was one guy that was that served in the I think he served in the Navy um, and he was basically like, hey, everybody should serve in the military. So they kind of like learn what 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 that is and how to be disciplined. And I was like, mm, I don't know if that's possibly true. Uh, I, a while back, a friend of mine and I had a discussion. I think it's like an early, early episode of my podcast, Taboo Table Talk, uh, where we talked about how Israel makes everybody serve in the military for, I think, a year or two. I, I, I can't remember exactly how many years it is, but but it's a little bit. And uh, <laughs> and I remember thinking about it. And I was like, I guess. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I think if you go to military school. Right, like for a year, maybe when you're 18 you graduate from high school, 17, 18, you graduate from high school and they go, everybody kind of has to go through this thing. And it's kind of like a mix of like a community college and, uh, and military school. So it teaches you discipline. It teaches you like critical thinking skills. It teaches you like personal responsibility, um, like how to make your own schedule, how to kind of be self-sufficient in a way. Um, and you do that for a year and you get through it, right? Like, yeah, you can run the drills, but I, the problem I would have with that is there's probably a lot of nationalism that is preached in these military schools. And I don't, I mean, like our education system already is kind of nationalistic. Um, so I particularly don't think that's a great idea uh, only because I think, I, I, don't, I, I don't think in, in Western civilization, 
the notion of nationalism leads to a lot of positive gains. Uh, you're, you're looking at a system that creates a massive level of xenophobia, and, and this will lead into the question that I asked her is, I faced you know, the, the, the backlash of nationalism throughout my whole life. I faced the backlash of nationalism, you know, for growing up in, in this country, especially after 9-11. I, I think I was like 13 or 14 when that shit happened and immediately saw how fucking gross people can become, you know, how, how much nationalism is, is, is really, it takes fear and turns it up into xenophobia and racism and um, you know, religious persecution, and and we're just, uh, under the guise of nationalism, especially in this country, we are willing to give up a lot of personal freedom, give up a lot of our own logic, give up a lot of our rights, um, because that nationalism churns up that fear. Uh, so I, you know, in my head, I was like, ah, well, I disagree with you, uh, although there seems to be some value in learning, you know, discipline via military training, like one year of basic training mixed with critical thinking and like a community college mentality where you're taking and learning a multiple different um, trades and skills and things of that sort. That can be something cool um, because it's, it's ridiculous that we're just like, make a giant financial decision and figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life as an 18 year old with a lot of hormonal issues like that. Like that's crazy. Um, but the military aspect of it is, is what would be troubling to me. So, so because of that, I, you know, when, when my question came up, um, I had a lot of thoughts about what I was going to ask her. Um, and I settled with uh, with this because I was writing about uh, writing about it a lot, so it was on the forefront of my mind quite a bit. Um, and um, I basically said I got my citizenship to vote for either Tulsi Gabbard or Bernie Sanders, which is a hundred percent true. That's that's the reason. That's that's one of the reasons why I pushed forward into that. Um, and you know. Uh, I said, what do we do in our society? Because I've seen, I've seen this level of nationalism turn into xenophobia and hatred. And uh, I'm very well aware that getting my citizenship does not mean that people are going to be less xenophobic and, um, uh, you know, racist and uh, hate me for the color of my skin. That's not going to change just because... I have a, you know, a certificate that says that, uh, you know, I'm naturalized for this country. And we're looking at something like the Patriot Act, which has effectively taken a lot of our freedoms away in, in the, the lens of nationalism. So, you know, my question was like, what do we do to be anti-war on the ground level? And how do we talk to our leaders to encourage them to continue being, um, you know, to take anti-war status, status um, because that is a flagship issue of yours. Um, and that is an issue that really pushed me to, to look into you a lot more and so on and so forth. Uh, and you know, when I said like, I got my citizenship to, to either vote for Tulsi or Bernie, she was like, oh man, that's pretty intense. And I was like, yeah, no big deal, no big deal. Just, you know, a lot of, uh, no, no pressure here. Uh, but uh, so, you know, um, she answered the question with how she doesn't think the Patriot Act needs to be around anymore. Um, and there's a sunset provision, um, and, you know, a lot of people are going to, um, the, like, Congress was going to go vote for it at that point. I think they passed it. FISA and Patriot Act have been restored. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Leave a comment um, if, you, if you have more information about this, if you have a thought or two about this. But... I believe that a lot of Democrats ended up voting for it because they jammed an infrastructure bill into renewing the Patriot Act and FISA. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that's I feel like I remember reading that at one point and being pretty infuriated about it um, because that's how they do stuff. That's how they make things happen.
is is through that. So, uh, and so she was like, yeah, I think we need to we need to not vote for stuff like that. We need to tell you know our our citizenship that that we are not going to spy on them and and go to war for resources and and things of that sort um and she said on the ground level it's just educating people and talking to people um keep being you know supporting anti-war movements essentially um you know and and she was very cordial about that answer uh, that that answer and i felt i I didn't like i felt super nervous about asking a period um because again like i'm an outsider i'm a brown guy that's super fucking anti-war and a socialist, and I'm just like, maybe we should just focus on taking care of each other instead of trying to profit off of each other all the time. And it's like, and then people are just like, you're gonna fuck this guy telling us to love each other, you know? Like, so I, you know, the level, so I was a little nervous. And it's also like, it's not my state. Like, I'm not from fucking New Hampshire, um, which I get it. Like, so, <clears throat> you know, if, if some people are like, well, you, you weren't critical enough. Um, I, because one of the major policies that I do disagree with her on is, is her drone policy. And I thought about asking her a question about that as a follow-up or something. And I decided not to, because I got a pretty good response, uh, from her in terms of like pushing for anti-war leadership, <clears throat> putting, push, pushing for, um, a, a entire citizenship that is anti-war and how we can support these movements just, you know, in, in terms of being, um, uh, m- more conversational about the topics and, uh, you know, being more vocal about resisting towards, uh, you know, the, the creating more wars and more, more issues of that sort. <clears throat> so I, so I, 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 with the mix of, I'm not from New Hampshire, I'm not here to kind of stir shit up. Um, I have a pretty good response from her. And I was already kind of nervous anyway. I kind of didn't want to push her on something to where I'm like, I've got this thing to vote for you. Also, here's a thing that I don't like about what you say. Um, I tried to, I, I thought maybe I'll talk to her about it later, but you know, the, the opportunity did not uh, come up. Um, but, uh, you know, I, 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 said thank you and sat down and we had a couple more questions and somebody stood up and said hey you should run as an independent because the democratic party is screwing you they screw anybody that is um r- 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 uh, an outsider um and uh you know she was like yeah i think the dnc does that but i'm i'm trying to restore the democratic party I'm trying to, uh, you know, uh, bring it back to what it was, which is fair, but I think, I think a month ago I did believe in that. I thought maybe that would be possible. Um, and the reason for that is because of 2016, right? In 2016, we kind of saw major exposures of the Democratic National Convention. Uh, the the, D, the Democratic National Committee, rather, um, the DNC um, is a, is a corrupt organization. They're a private company that that controls our elections. What the fuck? Um, so after 2016, after they screwed up Bernie. You saw a lot more people start getting excited and more active um, and ready to participate in their democracy. Fucking great. Fucking awesome. I'm into that. I'm into it. I'm into it. Uh, 2018, we saw the DSA organize, come together, and they've been doing it. They've been doing it since 20, probably longer, but this was, this was in, in my opinion, a really, really big public uh, display of how well the DSA can organize. Um, and they got a lot of people into the House of Representatives. They got a lot of people into Congress uh, that ch- that were Democrats that championed the DSA uh, values, right? Awesome. Into it. Into it. So to me, I was like, that this might work. We, we, we might have a chance to rebuild this, this party 
um, and take it back, you know, to it, it might take till 2024 to really like fucking shake, make these crystal clear changes and stuff, but it could work. So, um, yeah, when when she said that, I was like, yeah, OK, this kind of lines up with with what I'm what I'm thinking right now. Um, there is a movement in place and it's a movement that we, I think, can uh, support and get behind and uh, so on and so forth. So um, she eventually, that w w when she answered that question, she, things started wrapping up and she was like, oh, I'm going to get on stage and have a meet and greet. So if anybody wants to come say hi, take a photo, whatever, have additional questions that we didn't get to, I will answer them there. Uh, so all of that probably before the meet and greet was 50 minutes to an hour, some, some, somewhere along those lines. Um, and so I stood up and the, this, the old man standing next to me was, uh, looked, looked, grabbed my arm and he looked, leaned over and he was like, Hey, you should vote for Tulsi over Bernie. Bernie, Bernie wants to give away free stuff and nothing is free. And I looked at him and I and I laughed a little and I was like, I don't think Bernie's proposing anything for free, uh, you know, uh, and he kind of stared at me. And what I wanted to tell him, and I'll, and I'll get into why I didn't get the opportunity to tell him. What I wanted to tell him was, look, we have to tax the rich. The rich have to pay for um, for for what they want. We do have socialism in this country. We have socialism for the rich. Right. We just saw one point five trillion dollars get magically injected into Wall Street, into the banks, right? Like that happened in 08, the quantitative easing. And every fucking neoliberal came out and just like shit on Jill Stein when she brought when she brought that up. Um, and yeah, but we don't have that for people. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think middle class taxes will go up for about a year, right? For a little bit, I think the taxes will go up under Bernie's plan, under Tulsi's plan, too, probably. You know, they'll go up a little bit, but everybody's now paying their fair share, right? So, so Bezos has to pay his fair share, and uh, and Nick Hanauer has to pay his fair fair share, and fucking Zuckerfuck and 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 Tim Cook and all of these billionaires, they all have to pay their fair share, and 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 if they pay their fair share, there's enough money to 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 allocate funds into the healthcare system. Uh, because that'll be uh, that'll be you know nationalized into in 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 pub be a public service. Uh, it, we have enough for a public education system. Uh, we t you know taxing Wall Street like there there are ideas in place. You can be critical of them, and that's good because then that means that we're thinking about well how are they going to counteract it? How do we battle that counteraction? How do we counter their counter? Kind of a thing. And I wanted to tell this guy that it's just not he's not giving away free stuff like it's very what a, it's a misnomer. Um, but I didn't want him to miss his opportunity to, to talk to Tulsi for one because he was heading that way anyway. And, you know, all I got to say was I don't think Bernie's trying to give away free stuff. And he gave me this look and. Uh, and, you know, I got pulled over by Michael Tracy. Um, I was like, holy shit. Um, like, a, 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 a awesome independent journalist that I follow is, is coming over and talking to me. And, you know, I, I looked over to the old man and I was like, I don't want you to miss your opportunity to go meet Tulsi. You know, good luck. It was very nice meeting you. And he, and he said, you too, and walked over. And I was like, hello, Michael Tracy. And he kind of, he looked at me and I was like, I just watched your fucking interview with um you know, uh, Aaron Mate and, and we, and he was like, Oh, cool. And, and he, we talked for a few minutes. And one of the things he brought up was apparently no one had asked her a question about the Patriot Act before, um, in all of the town halls that they've done all through New Hampshire, like, you know, cause she was there for, I mean, two, three months, uh, something along those lines. And, you know, uh, no one had asked her a question about the Patriot Act. Um, and I was like, I really like I was the first guy to ask a question about the fucking Patriot Act. That's crazy pants. Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> so we started talking about it. Right. We started talking about uh, the sunset provision and and what the Patriot Act really is and why she's against it. And, you know, 
what his interest in in covering Tulsi was specifically because he wanted to have an objective um, coverage of Tulsi and I, and I do believe that he is being relatively objective uh, about about her um, you know because um, he can't you know he was like I don't agree with her a hundred percent of the time but I but her justifications make sense when she says them. I still don't agree with them, but it's like, okay, at least I can see the thought process and where it's coming from. It's not just, uh, it's you know, it's not like any other fucking neoliberal that comes out and it's just like, look, we got to prop up Wall Street. But why? Because that's just the fucking, you know, we've been doing it forever and, and they pay my bills. It, fucking just shut up and f do what I tell you to. This is democracy. You got to do what I tell you to because it's a democracy. So, um, you know, and then we ended up talking about like the McCarthyist bullshit that was spread around about her. Um, and we talked about like... The, Dr. Stephen F. Cohen, I was just like, there's nobody else that I could talk to about this stuff. There, I mean, there are people that I can talk to about this stuff, but it's just so rare that I can be like, Dr. Stephen F. Cohen says that, you know, the xenophobia against Russia might not be a, a good thing, that, that we should probably d go and do other things. And I was just like, that would be fucking, that's fucking crazy. You know, like, I don't get to have these sort of conversations with people. <laughs> So that was really neat. I I gotta I gotta admit, uh, it was it was really neat um, to uh, to meet Michael Tracy, and I got to you know sit and talk to him for a few more minutes. And he took a picture, um, and he was because he was really fascinated about the notion of like me um, wanting to vote for Tulsi and getting my citizenship over it, right? So that was kind of like a big uh, big deal. By the way, I do it, it, the giant button. Uh, that that you see the big giant button that you can kind of see is a is a giant Bernie button that I wear on my hat. If you if you've seen other road reflections, you've definitely seen that button before. Um, but you know we ended up talking for a little bit, and uh, he took a picture, and he tweeted about me, and uh, which that got a bunch of crazy ass responses. Uh, you know, like somebody was like, "Oh, he's throwing his vote away," and then somebody was like. Um, his, his it's it's an act of fascism my voting is an act of fascism you guys me voting is an act of fascism that's crazy um you know and then there were a lot of nice people that were like thank you this is really cool da 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 da, da. uh and you know eventually he was like i'm going to you know i i'm going to to talk about this stuff and blah 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 and uh um he was like, go talk to Tulsi. She, I'm, I'm sure she'll be excited to talk to you a little bit more. Um, and so it was, you know, I shook his hand, got the, got, got this, got this sweet selfie uh, with, uh, with Michael Tracy. I, like, I, I definitely fanboyed a little bit, to be honest. Like, you know, I, I, I fanboyed a little bit. Um, I'm not going to lie about it. But, uh, you know, I, I, headed up to to meet Tulsi and I got stopped by another uh ABC news reporter that that asked me a couple questions about like so what's the big thing between Tulsi and Bernie and I was like well the anti-war stuff is she's she's very prevalent in that and um speaks out against it quite often and very clearly very succinctly and I'm and I'm very much enjoy that and that was that was really cool so I got to talk to her and so I'm, I'm towards the very end of the line. I maybe have one or two people standing behind me. And I, you know, I walked up and she was very excited to, uh, to meet me and, and shake my hand and stuff. And, and then we got to talk for, I think, like a solid seven or eight minutes. Um, not super fucking long, but long enough, you know, um, where we talked about, I talked about Iran with her. Um, you know, we, it, she was very excited to, uh, to meet me and stuff, and, and she was, uh, uh, she asked me, like, where I was from, and I told her I was from India, and, and all this other, just kind of getting to know each other, and then we kind of dip, dipped into, and she was like, thank you for asking the question, um, and I talked to her about, like, so what's going on with Iran? Do you think that at this point there's an opportunity to uh, talk peace with them? 
Um, and she very candidly said, at this point, I don't think this administration has any interest to, and neither, neither do they have an opportunity after what they did. Um, and I said, well, okay, uh, what about you? And she was like, oh, absolutely. That'd be the first thing that I do is try to, you know, talk peace and broker this d peace deal and things of that sort. Um, so I was, I was, you know, I was like, cool. Like, I'm, I'm glad, like, and, and she seemed very genuine when she talked to me. You know, when you're face to face with somebody, when, when you look at somebody in the eyes, you can kind of get a sense and a feeling for who they are. I didn't get any sort of like nefarious action or anything. Um, and, uh, and then I asked her, you know, back to, back to our, our, our conversation here is I, I asked her, um, Hey, these economic sanctions we're facing, do, do you consider that to be warfare? And she was like, yeah, absolutely. We're, we're, we're like crushing their economy for that's absolutely warfare. Um, and she talked about like how old this idea of economic warfare really is and how, how kind of crazy it is that we're still doing it, you know? Um, and I thought that was like, yeah, fucking dope. You gave me, uh, a, a really good response to all of that. Um, so I, I felt good about them. And then we, we were talking and then she was, and then, you know, we took a, our photo together and, and we, we'd spent a couple minutes talking at this point. Like I said, it's like seven or eight minutes straight. And, and then I, I saw that there was one or two people standing behind me and I was like, Oh, I don't want to take up too much, too much more of your time. I really appreciate you, you, you talking to me and, and you know, the, what you're saying on, and, and I genuinely meant that. And I, and I still do, right? Like I, I, I genuinely think that her bringing up a lot of anti-war, um, um, topics on the debate stage and and her voice was so important to have on that debate stage and she called out the dnc for what it was several different times um and uh and you know we got our we got our photo together this very nice photo that she took with me um this was very cool and i was wearing uh you can't really see it uh, a whole lot maybe i'll move this maybe i'll move the image up a little bit but if you can notice my shirt is a uh is it, it's got the Ganesh on it. Uh, but, uh, you know, this, this very nice photo, uh, she took with me, her sister took the photo. Um, and right before I left, she was like, so you, you said your name was Krish. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, is that short for anything? And I was like, yeah, it's Ramakrishnan. Uh, and she's like, oh yeah, I thought, I thought maybe that's what it was. It was short for. I practice, uh, Vaishnava Hinduism, which is you know, this, uh, a, a part of a worship of, of Krishna. And I was like, yes, I, I do know that about you. I, I grew up Hindu. I'm actually an agnostic myself, which is, you know, true. And she was like, that's really cool that you're, you're named after, uh, after these two gods. And I was like, yeah, I, I feel like it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot of pedestal for me to, to get on, you know? And, uh, you know, it's just like, uh, I'm named after two gods that killed demons. And, and one of them was, uh, you know, uh, very popular with the ladies. Krishna was very popular with the ladies, and I am none of those things. I have no plans on killing demons, and I am not very popular with the ladies. Uh, and you know, so I, I'm 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 a letdown uh, to 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 my namesakes here. Uh, and you know, she kind of laughed about that, and she was like, "Yeah, it's, that's great. You're not you're not killing any demons. So you're you're just you're just a full time comedian. Um, you know, you're you're just torn around, blah blah blah." Uh, and, you know, I shook her hand again and I said, it was very wonderful to meet you. And I got up and, and immediately was greeted by a bunch of her staff. Uh, one of them gave me the button that I wear on my, my hat, uh, still. And, uh, and then I got a button. I, I made a donation, um, and, and got a second button to put on my jacket. I like collecting buttons. That's, I, I, you know, if you're an avid follower of what I do, you kind of know that I'm, I'm a button guy. That's what I like to collect. So, uh, if you got buttons... If you got buttons after all of this crazy crisis shit is over, I'll, I'll, I'll get your buttons, um, you know. So her staff was super nice, and they and this was also around the time where CNN was, like, not inviting her to that climate, to, to their town halls, even though she had qualified, and then they were just like, Deval Patrick is running, and Deval Patrick was like, I, I am? I, ca I guess so. Uh... And so that was all happening, and they were like, come to this rally, and da-da-da-da-da. Uh, of course, the following day, there was, you know, the storm coming in, and I didn't know what the, what the hell was going to happen with that. And then I, and then I started to not feel great. Um, I, you know, I kind of was like, ah, shit, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm getting a, a cold here. 
uh, you know, so I, di- I didn't go to the, to the rally, unfortunately. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of was just like, I, I kind of feel like I want to give the folks here, the volunteers, um, and see if I can give my album to Tulsi. And I was like, Hey, are you guys like done, done for the night? Or like, are you guys leaving in the next like five minutes? They're like, no, no, no. You know? And I was like, I got to run out to my car and grab something. I'll be right back. So I ran out to my car, come back. And I pass out my album and I walked over to Tulsi, who, by the way, was after all this stuff was done, after she had just stood on stage for maybe like another 30 or 40 minutes talking to people. Right. And again, I don't know if other candidates do this. I would be very surprised if someone like fucking Pete Buttigieg did it. I could probably see Bernie hanging out on stage for a while and talking to people as much as he possibly could. Uh, I, you know, but I don't know if I would see any other case. Like, I don't think Joe Biden's fucking doing that shit. You know, Joe Biden's probably just like, all of you who don't vote for me are a bunch of commie pansies. It's all a bunch of malarkey. I hate all of you. Who can I sniff? And then that's what, that's what Joe does, right? They're just like, form a line on this side if you want to talk to Joe Biden. Form a line on this side if you want to be sniffed by Joe Biden. Uh, and, but like, nobody joins that line so he just he just sniffs everybody on this side anyway um you know but 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 so so she sat down and talked to one of the organizers of the town hall and she was just one-on-one kind of having this nice nice conversation so i walked up to her and i I made a little joke it was like hey i wanted to give you this cool like i don't want it to be kind of weird i want to give you my album you know appreciate what you're doing blah 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 uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that you talk about on stage of, of like coming together as people and um, valuing each other's differences. So if I talk about that on the album and I gave, and she was like, this is wonderful. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I have no idea if she listened to it. She might not have whatever. If she did, cool. That's fucking awesome. But I figured I would give it to her. I gave it to her, um, uh, her, her media guy as well. And, uh, you know, my, my pitch to her is like, hey, I know you're a fan of Jimmy Dore. Uh, so it's like, like my comedy is similar to Jimmy Dore's. It's just like, like if Jimmy Dore was like way more handsome, uh, and you know, like just making a little joke. Uh, I I don't know if you know that about me, but I make, I make, I make jokes when I'm super nervous (laughs) about stuff. Uh, and I felt really good about that. And I, I was like on a high, like I felt really fucking good, um, I drove back to the couch surfers and, and, you know, talked about that. And, uh, it was a really cool evening. I, I, you know, regardless of, uh, of current events, it was a very cool evening. And I think, you know, going, uh, uh, like I said, I've been thinking about this, uh, over the last few days. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I felt, I got a very genuine feel from her and, that's part of the reason why this is so confusing as it is for me. I watched Graham Elwood's video. I've watched a couple other people's videos that are very angry about, and, and rightfully so. I'm not taking their anger away from them. I, 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 everybody has their different ways of processing it. My, my way of processing it is, is like when I saw that, I was just like, what the fuck is happening right now? Like, you know, it, she is a very principled person, um, and I just wish that she would have stuck to the principles of all of her policies and what she ran her campaign on rather than the fucking principles of the DNC, uh, who she rallied against. But, you know, thinking back to that, it's... I. I really didn't see any sort of like nefarious falsehoods in who she was. I felt like she genuinely cared about what people had to say, Um, you know, and just her sitting there and talking to this woman after she had talked to goodness, who knows how many other people, you know? So yeah, it's, it's, this is part of the extra blow, but I, what you know the thing that I really got was um, I've said this before is politicians like Tulsi Gabbard and and Bernie Sanders are kind of mascots for the idea mascots for a movement 
Um, and I think specifically Bernie and Tulsi really brought a whole lot of working class people together from a lot of different belief systems and a lot of different political ideologies. Um, and what we need are those people to come together. Uh, they become the spearheads of the movement, but what we need are organizers for the movement. And that's not going to come from, um, I, I think, any sort of you know large famous politician. That I think is going to come from us. Um, we're we're going to need some ground level organization. Uh, and there are some movements that are already started, right? I talked about Burn the DNC, B E R N the DNC, uh, Movement for a People's Party. There's a lot of Dem exit stuff going on that I'm I'm, I'm working I'm going to be working on. Uh, a piece about uh, rather soon uh, because it's kind of a rather soon kind of a situation. Um, and really what I got out of that is is that this is up to us. You know, we, we need more gatherings like what was happening before the town hall started, which was a fucking guy sitting, a conservative old man sitting next to a Indian immigrant American citizen that's also an anti-war socialist and just talking and getting to know each other a little bit you know figuring out what we have in common what we don't have in common um, showing each other a little bit of kindness and compassion and understanding and uh, you know a, a, a guy wearing a Trump 2020 shirt at a, at a fucking Tulsi Gabbard town hall sitting next to a member of ARP that believes in Medicare for all and ensuring that, that health care is a human right to people um, and having a conversation together without calling each other names and screaming at each other. That is 100% possible. And I saw it happen um, at the Stilsey Gabbard town hall. Um, and I think that's, that's where the future needs to go. We need more of that in our society, and, and I know we're capable of it because I've fucking seen it, and this is not the only time that I've seen it. I've seen other points in time, you know, I, just at my shows alone where I've had people with different values come up and talk to me after shows and was like, I never thought about it that way, or, you know, I think this is an interesting thing that you could talk about or something along those lines. Um, so, yeah, I think it's 100% possible. That's That's really what I got out of it, and I think that's where the future is. Um, and, and as I, I think for Tulsi supporters, as angry and betrayed and upset as we are um, over her endorsement of Joe Biden, over her endorsement uh, of, of a pro-war candidate that kind of goes against a lot of the principles that she herself believes in, uh, the rest of it falls on us. So... That's the story. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you guys, it, it, this wasn't too rambly and jambly. Let me know what you thought. If you if you uh, get a get a chance to leave a comment, leave a like, leave a subscribe. Get get make sure that you're subscribing because more videos are coming. And like I said, tomorrow I will be going live on Facebook. So if you're not following me on Facebook, please please give give that a, a like and get hit the hit the bell on there as well. Um, to, to, to notify you of when I'm putting up videos and when I'm premiering videos, these longer videos, I will be, you know, kind of monitoring the chat box and everything to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm answering questions as they come along. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I, I, this would be the point where I would guy tell you guys, uh, that I have live stand up comedy dates, but I don't know what the fuck I'm going to have live stand-up comedy dates. <laughs> uh, we're all going through a tough time right now, um, so be good to each other. If you, if you have the means, if you can donate, um, the, the easiest way to make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member uh, of, uh, of, uh, of all of my content to support all of the content that I'm going to be putting out uh, for the foreseeable future, uh, go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate uh click the link in the description and uh, you can make a one-time donation you can become a sustaining member there are various different options for both uh, you can while you're on my website you can also download uh, all of my stand-up comedy albums the best place to do that is Bandcamp. Um, that's the best place to do that 
uh, if you can and would like to, you, you totally can. Uh, that, that's the best place. And look, uh, if, you, if you are, you know, you're like, hey, I, w I would love to listen to your stand-up, but I can't put any money into it, that's totally cool. Uh, hit me up. Send me a message. Send me an email. You know, tell me what's going on, and I will give you a copy of it. I'm very happy to do that as well. We all kind of have to support each other, get each other's back. Um, if, if you feel so inclined and you can purchase my stuff or, or any other artist stuff as a gift to other people, uh, that would be super fucking cool. That's very kind. Of, that, that would be a super kind thing to do for somebody uh, right now because I think uh, what we need is uh, you know, more entertainment, more ways to communicate with each other through online platforms. Um, and uh, and come together in solidarity of each other. So I hope I hope I hope that you will do that out there. Um, I hope that you guys uh, will join me on the live stream stuff tomorrow. I've got a couple of ideas and articles that I've got lined up. But if you would like to send me ideas, uh, shoot me a message, shoot me an email. Those are going to be the easiest ways to get a hold of me. Um, you know, any social media thing, any, uh, to shoot me a message on, uh, and, uh, till tomorrow, folks, we'll see you on the road. Stay safe.